Welcome. Today we're going to be disassembling a Dell G3 gaming laptop and this model is 3579 and to start we're going to need a Phillips head bit. This one is a 2.5. So we're going to go ahead and flip it over and remove the bottom case screws. Once you have those bottom case screws out, we're gonna go ahead and pop the bottom case off of the palm rest assembly. All right, this one was a little bit tricky, but not too bad. Um, just gonna work your way around the palm rest, uh, as you just saw, and then flip it over. And depending on which side, uh, you wanna lift from the side that does not have the ports poking through, um, cause then it's gonna lift up on those ports and pry on the motherboard. So it looks like for this one, you're gonna pry from that uh, SD card side and pop up the bottom case to remove it. All right, so now we have a good uh, view of the inside of the laptop. And at first I like to remove the battery and remove the power from the motherboard. So we can just pull that tape up to reveal the connector. And it's just a simple type connector and you can just pull that straight out of there. And then we'll go ahead and remove these screws for the battery. And then once we have the screws out, we'll go ahead and remove it. Go ahead and spread those retainers and remove the memory stick. And for the Wi-Fi card, we'll go ahead and remove this screw. Then the little protector for the antennas. And then we'll just lift straight up on those antennas to remove them from the card. And then we can pull the card from the motherboard. All right, for the hard drive, it looks like it's just a ribbon connector. So we're gonna flip up on the retainer and pull that hard drive ribbon from the motherboard. And then we can remove the screw remaining screws for the hard drive. All right, and once we have the caddy out, you can go ahead and pull that SATA connector out of the hard drive. And then to remove the hard drive, just the two screws on each side of the caddy. All right, now we can uh, go ahead and remove the fan and heat sink assembly. It looks like the video cable is threaded through one of the fans, so we're gonna go ahead and remove that. 
So just flip up on the retainer and flip it back down. And then we'll thread that video cable out and away from the fan. And with this type of connector, just grab those little tabs, pull straight out. And it is definitely handy to have some kind of small tool because in this case, it's really hard to get in there with fingers. You're gonna need a tool to pop that connector out. All right, so once you have those connectors loose, we'll go ahead and looks like about eight screws, nope, about 12 screws to remove the fan and heat sink, fans and heat sink. All right, once you have the heat sink screws uh, loosened and removed, we can go ahead and just start wiggling the heat sink until it comes off of the motherboard. A lot of times the thermal paste, especially if it's old, will act as a pretty, pretty good adhesive. So um, just wiggle that heat sink back and forth and you should be able to get it off, no problem. All right, now we can go ahead and remove the in-out board and power button. And we can also, looks like we're gonna have to remove the hinge screws to get that motherboard out anyways. So we'll go ahead and remove these hinge screws and swivel that hinge up out of the way. All right, now we have access to the uh, screws for the in-out board and the power button. The power button screw is quite a bit smaller, so for now we will go ahead and just get this in-out board. And then we'll wanna go ahead and remove the connector for the power button as well. And since the connector for the in-out board is underneath the motherboard, we're not gonna be able to remove it from the motherboard just yet. So we'll go ahead and release it from the in-out board. All right, so we're gonna switch to a smaller Phillips bit. This is a 1.5. And that will allow us to remove the screw for the power button. and a little bit of tape. All right, so we have the video cable free on this side. The hinge is up and out of the way, so we'll go ahead and do the other side now. Go ahead and throw in our 2.5 Phillips again and remove the last few hinge screws. All right, so now we can swivel the hinge up and out of the way, which gives us access to the DC jack. So we'll go ahead and remove that as well. It might take a little bit of wiggling back and forth, but it'll just slide out of the connector. All right, so our motherboard is nice and exposed, so we can go ahead and remove the last of the ribbons and the last screws and remove the motherboard. 
So we have more uh, flip up connectors. So flip them up, remove, and then flip them back down. And then the push out type for the speakers. All right. Go ahead and remove the rest of that outboard ribbon. All right, now we can remove the remaining screws in that motherboard and then remove the motherboard from the palm rest. And when you're removing a motherboard, it's always best to just give it a little wiggle, make sure that there's nothing else attaching it. And then when you pull it free from the case, do it slowly. Sometimes uh, they'll put ribbons that connect on the bottom of the motherboard and it'll just, yeah, it can kind of tug on them when you're removing the motherboard. All right, so we have the uh, display assembly still attached here, sort of. Um, the palm rest, the keyboard is not removable. Um, so if your keyboard needs to be replaced, you're gonna have to buy a palm rest assembly. But the touchpad looks like there's just four Phillips head screws at the top here, and you should be able to remove that touchpad. And then the speakers are just kind of held on by rubber grommets. All right, so to remove that palm rest, we'll just kind of flip it up a little bit to clear those hinges. And then we're left with the uh, LCD display. All right, now if you need to replace your LCD panel or hinges or anything else inside the display assembly, you're gonna to wanna to first separate the bezel from the back cover. So you can either use a, a flat tool along the outside edge, or some models you can just grab um, the inner part of the bezel and just kinda of pull back and work your way around. Some you do both. This one is pretty tight around the corner, so I'll go ahead and use a flat tool to pop up the snaps on the corner. And once you have it started, then you can usually finish your way all the way around. All right, so after you've worked the bezel off, you can see on the inside here, there are um, just a couple, about five screws on either side to replace the hinges and rails. And then four Phillips head screws to remove this LCD panel. Now, when you remove the screws, you can, the four screws, you can just flip the display over and this is the video cable which plugs into the back and it's usually held on with a little bit of tape and um, it's pretty easy to just remove the bezel and remove that LCD panel so if you have by chance cracked your LCD um, it's quite easy to actually replace it um, even while it's still on the laptop so you can see there's just four screws and then fold the LCD over and then you'll just disconnect that one cable that's held into the screen so the Wi-Fi antennas are also held in just by some adhesive and the cables work their way around here um, as well as the video cable. Um, it's also in combination with the webcam cable so it's just behind the rails going to the webcam and then the webcam is easily removable uh, just by flipping it up from the top or bottom and it's just held on by a little bit of adhesive. So once you have that bezel off, it's really easy to replace anything you need to inside the display assembly. Um, but in this case, we're gonna leave this one complete. Uh, so that is how you disassemble a Dell G3 gaming laptop. If this video helped you or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.